Over the past two years, a team from Embry-Riddle University in Florida has been working hard to enter the contest. Over 200 people had a part in the project. Ultimately, the team was disqualified from the competition for technical reasons, but this seemed to be of little concern to these students. Their goals went way beyond the possibility of monetary gain. Well, it's a, it's a very cool competition. Uh, the students here at Ember Hill have been working on this for two years, and uh, um, we are a student team, even though I'm the oversight from the university, and we make sure that they do things safely. But uh, students have been really excited about green aviation is one of the things that Ember Hill is really promoting, uh, and this follows in alignment with that. So we're pretty excited. Uh, we're the first hybrid gas electric battery airplane, and uh, we're excited about that as well. We've been working really, really hard on this for the past two years, especially the last few months, all of us students. Um, it's been a wonderful experience just to get here, and just to be able to fly is wonderful. I know we weren't competing for the prize, but uh, like we've all said several times, none of us ever really thought we'd see the money. Well, we, we wouldn't see the money, so it wasn't about the money. It was about learning, about proving that we could do something that I guess a lot of other people couldn't do. A hybrid aircraft, it's pretty neat. This plane is the only hybrid here in Sonoma County this week. The basic idea to create a Prius that flies. The whole propulsion system of this airplane was uh, designed right from scratch by Embry-Riddle students, so this is our first exposure to uh, integration of uh, batteries and gas uh, together. So we learned a lot about uh, how we integrate all those things together as far as, uh, especially in the area of batteries and electric motors and motor controllers. Um, and our airplane is probably the most complex here because we actually have all the things that the gas folks have, all the things that the electric folks have, plus all the systems to integrate that together sort of seamlessly. The flight went really well. We uh, tightened the belts in the morning a little bit because the belts were a little loose yesterday. Um, started the takeoff run with no problem and did a little bit different uh, strategy than yesterday. Did a little bit of a shallower uh, climb so that way I would have a little bit more speed and I uh, run the Rotex for a little longer than usual and then uh, did a little steeper of the sense, you know, with the same idea to try to uh, uh, fly a little faster. So we're, we're going up and down a little faster than, than yesterday, but uh, the flight went well. Basically I used, you know, the, the race rules of uh, 6,500 as the maximum altitude and 4,000 as the minimum altitude. So every time I got to 6,500, I would turn the Rotex off and switch the battery system and you know, run the battery from 6,500 to about 4,000, and then I'll turn the Rotex back on. Uh, the battery is way more efficient, but uh, we can't maintain altitude in the batteries yet, and that's one of the things that we're gonna work on. Uh, the Rotex burns quite a bit of, of fuel, so we're, we're trying to minimize the time on the Rotex. On the last lap, um, I decided just to go a little faster to see how it was, so I actually level off on the Rotex for about five to ten minutes and, and flew level on the Rotex with about 140 miles per hour and then I shut it off and, and went back to the battery and did a you know a, a pretty steep descent and pretty fast descent on the battery all the way down to about 600 feet over over the cafe hangar. Having completed this challenge the team is already considering many improvements for the plane. Our battery system I think we could do a lot better and uh, we, we've had a little bit of trouble with our electric motor, so I think if we could work out some of the bugs and get it to actually work properly, I think that would help a lot. And uh, we were kind of, for a long time, we were trying to figure out our flight profile, which is actually my thesis, is trying to figure out what we were going to do, when we were going to transition between the two systems, when we were going to run electric, when we were going to run gas, where we were going to climb, where we were going to descend. And uh, it was clearly, it was made clear that what we what we were forced to go with based upon what we could do with our electric motor was not the proper way to go. So I think in the future um, we would fix our electric motor, make our battery system maybe a little bit more powerful. And there's a lot of drag issues that we still know that are on the airplane, but we didn't uh, feel that uh, we had tested thoroughly enough to bring it to the competition here. So there's still quite a large delta of performance uh, for this airplane that's been left on the table, and we're, we're looking at picking that up over the next couple of uh, months. By nature, this team of students had many unique challenges to overcome, and in the end, they met them with success.
Uh, the biggest challenge along the way was probably working with all the students and trying to keep them motivated because there was a time when we thought we were out of the competition. It was also difficult too because um, a lot of them have other priorities. You know, they're, they're students, they're in college, uh, they focus on their studies first, well that's what they're supposed to do. And then, you know, then there's a social aspect and everything else. But this, I mean, this was all volunteer based, so nobody had a grade. Um, you know, nobody was getting paid, so there weren't any like big motivating factors. But luckily, I'm so glad I found the people that I did. They made this all such an easy, well not easy, but a much easier process. And we actually gave us a chance of being here and actually flying. Uh, at Embry-Riddle, we have an area called the Flight Research Center, which is where these folks uh, did this particular project. And we do a lot of work of this type. And to my knowledge, it's the only American university that really has students uh, with their shirt sleeves rolled up, uh, working on the airplanes, designing the airplanes. And again, other than oversight by our own uh, Embry-Riddle DERs and AMPs and IAs and uh, various engineers, uh, the students designed this from scratch and, and they didn't just throw it over the fence to somebody to be manufactured. Uh, the engineers and, and various folks that were students actually went and manufactured these parts, assembled it, tested it. Uh, like they say in experimental airplanes, we probably made three of everything before we ended up with what's in front of you. Uh, so it's a tremendous learning experience. So now the question is, what's next for the Embry-Riddle team and their STEMI S10 known as the Eco Eagle? I think we're going to, you know, there's, we already have a, uh, a expo to a, a bunch of people on Thursday down in Florida, assuming we make it back because we're going to trail there. But there's a lot of uh, industry, uh, high people from the industry of Boeing and, and all those, you know, Airbus and several uh, companies that are going to come down to meet with the president of the university. And, and we're trying to make it back there in time so we can show the aircraft. Uh, we're going to try to, you know, make improvements on it and take it to Sun and Fun and if possibly Oshkosh and just, you know, be a display and, and, and fly around and show what we what the students have accomplished you know that's that's remarkable I would love to do something like this to work with green aviation um, aviation is my passion and I love the environment um, I'm kind of a hippie or something so to actually be involved in two things that I'm passionate about is kind of a wonderful thing so I'm hoping that maybe I can find a company that does that or maybe start my own company um, there's a possibility that I could stay and teach I don't know we'll see <laughs>